I'm having that silly issue with this keyboard again. You know what that means. You can actually see how dusty this keyboard has gotten over time, but you know, I can understand that. I've had this issue already with the repeating key stuff around three times um, over the course I've had this and used this keyboard. At one point I even tossed it aside. And once I started using it again, I noticed it was happening again. So I had to actually wash this keyboard a total of three times, including once in that previous keyboard washing video I made. Now you can see those little crumbs of whatnot and everything in here, but it still doesn't explain what's going on here. I'm actually curious on checking on other people might be having issues with these Mad Cat Strike 3 or TE keyboards. Um, I never actually had a keyboard that had this issue so much. So after washing, the keyboard does work much better. I'm really tired of typing the letter H and getting three of them or hitting backspace and the entire line I typed in. And not really, <laughs> but I'm exaggerating there. I'm gonna go ahead and toss this in the shower. All right, here we go. Cold water, guys. Warm is okay, but cold is better. Again, don't submerge it in water. I'm just going to give it a, like a little pre-rinse here. I'm going to shut the water off with this little brush here. Focus. There we go. Put a little bit of soap. Let me use the sink like this again. And off we go. Obviously this is a mechanical keyboard so you don't want to go too crazy. I'm basically just giving it kind of like a very uh, Paint just kind of swing there, like on an easel or a canvas. It's basically just like easy swings, and I know the keys sound a little rough. But that's just basically because I'm going against. This would be a little, this sound here is a little better. This is not good. Obviously, give a good wash to the keys that are giving you the most trouble. Well, these keys aren't, but everything in here is. Go horizontal and vertical as well, too. You can see some of the soap there is, uh, I don't know if you can see it there, but some of the soap is actually changing the color a little bit, saying that there's some junk coming out. Even the space bar has been giving me some issues too. All right. Here we have the keyboard all laddered up, I guess you, you can say here. And I'm going to give it a quick rinse. You can see how I'm holding the keyboard a little bit upside down. You really don't want to hold it like this too long. Just personal experience. Probably a good idea or you'll have to dry this much longer than you think. I can already see some uh, matter falling to the floor of the tub. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I did see some. And if you want to, you can even change the mode. If you have one of those uh, little shower heads that does that. I don't want to do it too long because it actually does wet the keyboard quite a bit. And then uh, we'll go ahead and dry this. You can see it's completely soaked right now. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and dry this keyboard up. Put it in front of a fan. 
This is basically how I drive my stuff. Um, any electronic that I usually toss in, even the CPU fans, case fans, any other sort of fans or whatnot. Keyboards as well too. Filters, dust filters from computer cases. I just basically put it on top of this little 14 inch fan I have here. Um, you can also lean the keyboard against the wall at an angle and uh, aim a fan at it as well too. Uh, obviously if you're going to do this you know, be sure to reposition the keyboard around a little bit so well, this keyboard weighs a bit so just be sure to position it with care just to see that all the key the entire keyboard different pieces of the keyboard actually get air and um, right now I have it on the medium I can also put it on high if I want to but totally up to you, your preference I'm going to leave this keyboard for at least a good two hours here's the first keyboard we washed uh, Given the good two hours of drying, sorry about the fan noise in the back, but I am drying another keyboard as I do this video. You can see it definitely looks much better. A little bit of dust, as you saw noticed there, a little bit of specs, but I did have this in front of a fan for a good two hours, so I definitely swallowed up something and put it right back on. But I gotta tell you, the keys don't even look that shiny anymore. They still sound great. Obviously, this is also a mechanical keyboard. If you have any RGB lighting, which this keyboard actually has, uh, I do recommend drying it a little bit more. I'm not going to plug this keyboard in just yet, um, right after I do this video. But you can definitely tell the keyboard actually looks really great. Get a little close-up view there. Probably see these little, uh, the paint coming off here, so it's just basically after you game so much on the keyboard, sometimes your fingernails, if they're a little bit longer, will start to peel it off a little bit. You probably notice this here if you do some gaming using these keys or these keys in particular. So, I'm expecting this keyboard will work out just fine. And uh, like I did say, this is like the third time I've washed this keyboard already. And I'm thinking that there must be some issue going on here. This is a uh, third time I've actually done it just because of the repeating key issue. And uh, I did ha actually have other, I did warranty actually this keyboard over the years when Mad Cats was still around. And um, while everything worked okay, a good many months later in, it will start to do the same issue again. And yes, the reason I did warranty it was because of the repeating keys issue. So... If washing it helps solve this issue for now, well, considering it was really dusty and filthy, why not? Here's the keyboard I use on my main PC, Corsair keyboard, aluminum, RGB lighting in the back, and uh, about a year, year and a half old, I'd say. Uh, really nice keyboard, I do love the feel of it, I love the sound of it too. I will tell you, well, you can also tell you, see it's pretty dusty and everything. I will tell you though, while a great keyboard, I've had some issues with some keys here, occasionally they break. I can actually tell you the H key is broken, the F key is broken. I really wish you could tell, but the H key definitely stands out a little bit in terms of, you know, how shiny it is because the keyboard, uh, the key was obviously replaced. Since it was still under warranty, I let Corsair know and they went ahead and sent uh, replacement keys. But I got to tell you, I have not had keys break like that before on keyboards so easily. So I'm not sure if I highly recommend this keyboard, but for what it's worth, it does work great. And uh, good candidate for the shower. This is like a $150 keyboard, so I'm sure you guys are cringing, but I am going to toss it in the shower. Here we go again. This keyboard again for you, in case you guys think I swapped it with something else. This thing does weigh too. It's your last chance to turn away if you don't want to see this. So 
Sorry if I blocked the camera with my head for a second, but here we go. I don't want to go too rough on this because as I mentioned before, I've had these keys break. Not when I was washing, by the way, just regular wear and tear use, so I gotta tell you. Having the key break three months after buying the keyboard is not particularly a really good track record. Actually, it wasn't really three months, let's say six. And then, of course, a month after I had that key replaced, another one broke, and I believe the last key that broke was the actually the H key. When I put the H key in there, I can actually see a huge difference. Um, sometimes I wonder if this was actually a little defect they had on some of these keyboards. Maybe they uh, strengthened up the little uh, plastic underneath of the keys that attaches to the little switch. But uh, that's basically what's, what happened. That little plastic inside just broke. And I gotta tell you, I've used some pretty cheap, crappy keyboards, uh, even at work. You know, your regular Lenovo or Dell keyboards that cost like $10, $15. And uh, when people get them all dirty and disgusting, they just throw them away and just use another one. That's how cheap they are. Never seen anything like that. Even when the keyboards actually drop to the floor. You can see a lot of the soap disappeared. And uh, sometimes when the soap begins to go away, other than just dripping off, it sometimes means that the keyboard really was just not that clean. So I'm just going to give it a little bit more of the brush rinse between the keys. I'm not really going too hard, just... Here I'm going a little bit more. Got to be careful, the edges of this keyboard actually could cut my, my hand a little bit. Actually already left a little imprint there. Alright, I think that should do it. I'm going to go ahead and give it a rinse. Let this guy dry. Again, guys, I cannot stress how much it is not really a great idea to submerge these keyboards underwater or even leave them like this for a long period of time. So just try not to do that, which is why I'm actually holding it and uh, why this video is actually a little more productive than my last one because now. I can actually use both hands. There's a label and everything. Another cringe moment for you guys. But I'm really looking forward to seeing this keyboard when it's dry. Now, being this is an RGB keyboard, I actually do recommend you leave it drying as long as you can. You don't want to fry out any little LED bulbs just because of one drop of water. Here's the Corsair keyboard. I use my main PC. Looking really, really good. I gotta be honest that the little shininess on the keys itself actually went away quite a bit. Kind of matches a uh, Keys I mentioned I replaced, F and H, if I remember correctly. Everything, all the dust is gone, but I mean the key, pretty, the key keyboard itself almost looks pretty much brand new. I really like it. It's one of the little pleasure about doing this kind of stuff when it actually works out. Some really good sights to see here and uh, it's a good example. Get a better closer shot here of everything as much as I can. You can even see the aluminum looks nice and clean. Looks really great. I let this keyboard dry out pretty much overnight. Uh, didn't have the fan on all night obviously. That thing would have kept me up all night too. But I did give it a good 2-3 hours of drying with the fan and then just let it drip dry. Quote. Uh, pretty much all night. So that was a good uh, six or seven hours, and um, here it is now. It's already plugged in and I turned it on. Let's go ahead and turn on all the LEDs. But yeah, I mean, you can definitely see all that dust is gone, all that dust between the keys in particular that would drive me nuts, and looks pretty good. Little tip for you guys, you know, if you're unwilling to, uh, and you're cringing to wash keyboards and water and whatnot, the little brush is still not a bad idea to actually get dust in between these keys out. Obviously, you just basically do like the little soft side to side strokes. Otherwise, you might actually pop one of these keys out and possibly damage the little under 
plastic, as I mentioned on this keyboard, that's had a couple of issues already with a couple of keys that have broken. But uh, this is the second time I've actually washed this Corsair keyboard, and so far, so good. Everything's working just fine. These buttons work too. The LEDs uh, indicate caps lock, caps lock. I seem to be working just fine. So, gotta tell you, this is uh, another good one right here. Here's another candidate for washing. This keyboard hasn't been cleaned or anything really, other than just a quick paper towel rub. You can actually see how dusty it is, but particularly what bothers me is the edges. I really can't get to that with a wet paper towel, so. Q-tips can help you with that, but I have a much easier, much faster method rather than just clean each keyboard. And occasionally I do get a little issue with the click, even though that might just be wear and tear, but I guess we'll see. So, I'm gonna toss this one in there as well too. This one doesn't weigh it much. Might be a little easier to clean up. Oh guys, yes of course, I did take out the batteries. Already got the back, fill a little soap. This keyboard wasn't giving me any trouble, but it needs to be cleaned. Plus my nephews have also gotten little crumbs on it too when they got their hands on it. The mouse too occasionally acts a little weird. If you're almost thinking again, this keyboard is actually really wonderful for media PCs. You know, your keyboard and your little touchpad here and clickies here as well too. I will tell you though, the smallest little drip of water on your fingers and this thing starts to act crazy. So just keep that in mind. However, I actually do own like three of these. And I've given some to friends and family for the same reason I use mine for. Again, you can see the soap is kind of changing color a little bit. I'm not sure, but some parts of the keyboard you can't see it. Almost feels like I'm pushing the soap into the keyboard, but that's what the rinse is for. And I did see a little bit of matter fall out of there somewhere. There we go. Once it dries up, well actually, tell you what, let me give it a qu quick rub with a towel real quick. Almost dry, <laughs> not really, but trying to clean it up. These particular areas around the keyboards you can see are now cleaned up from the shot I did earlier. Here we have a little wireless one, and you can see looking really good too. Actually. Even the keys sound a little different. I don't know. I do have a little confession for you guys, but you're not going to mind. I actually do have two of these. So, this one's actually going to be washed too. You can see this one's still dirty. Cleaned up. Dirty again. cleaned up. Huge difference. Oh, and if you're curious. Alright, so maybe they don't sound too different, but they definitely they feel a little different.
Here's one of my old work keyboards, and you can see it's definitely seen better days. Um, actually, the front doesn't look so bad. It's really just the back for some reason. Well, kind of a slightly abandoned keyboard, so not so bad, ergonomic. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and wash this one as well, too. This is probably one of the last keyboards I washed. Whoops, I almost dropped it. The back is actually a little sticky. I don't know where that came from. So this will definitely be a good one. This one's actually pretty bad, so I'm actually gonna give it a good wash, front and back. See that again? Just a closer shot of the keys. You do see some dust in between and whatnot, and, you know, little specks here and there. Obviously the keys are already like the little reflective stuff. Obviously I have used this keyboard quite extensively. Um, not much you can do about that, but you can definitely do something about all this. My goodness. It's like looking at a picture. It's got radiation dust everywhere. See stuff falling everywhere on the bottom. My goodness. Oh, got it on my hand too now. Yeah, that don't look good, does it? I have washed this keyboard before. You can actually tell from the label it's kind of it inching off a little bit. It's the back. I'm probably going to give it another comb down as well too. Sorry if any drips got on the lens. Which key on this keyboard is always giving me issues for some reason. And you know, for its worth, this keyboard is actually pretty solid. It did work until I got crumbs underneath one key. I would say this keyboard cost me maybe about 20, 15 to 20 dollars. I don't remember. Um, got it in bulk because I got a few more for other co workers. The back's feeling better, but you won't know anything until it's actually dry. Got to rinse my hands too from all that junk. They're still coming off. Well, that's what it looks like now with all the keys wet. Oh, you can actually see a little reflection there. This is what the back looks like. Definitely no more dust anymore. Now it's just wet everywhere. Let me give this thing a quick wipe down. See what it looks like. It's mostly dry and clean. There's a 
There's another view. So, let's try this one out. For whatever reason, this is actually an example of a keyboard that really does need a good decent amount of time to dry up. Um, after letting it dry for a good couple of hours, I did notice that, well, I did feel some a little bit of moisture between the keys still a little bit. So um, I let it go ahead and dry up a little bit more, actually a whole day. And then I just let it dry on its own with no fan on it. So now the key's up working just fine. I will admit though, the original first time I ever washed this keyboard was actually a couple of years ago. You can actually tell this keyboard's been used uh, quite a bit extensively. And uh, I did actually only let it dry for like a good hour and a half or two originally. And while the keyboard did work and it didn't blow up in my face either, so stuff as simple as that would not work. And some keys would work, some keys would not. Down arrow key would work, up arrow key would not. Caps lock would not light up. And I'm rethinking, great, I just fried the keyboard. I let it just dry on its own with no fan. And the next day, it seemed like everything was working fine, but then I noticed the start button is not working. So almost before calling that a loss, a good uh, two or three days went by and poof, the keyboard is actually 100% working. I really can't explain it. Maybe it's just the material that's inside the keyboard or the type of keyboard it is, or who knows what. But uh, I gave it the same amount of time or very close to it. And it definitely looks really good. Here's the back. Remember all that freaking dust and everything that was back there? Um, definitely all gone now. I mean, obviously the label here is a little ripped off. Just shows you how many times I've actually washed this keyboard over time. This is probably the third one, I believe. Though I gotta tell you, um, it's a much better condition now. That stickiness in the back that was uh, collecting all the dust is now gone. So, you know, my fingers don't feel sticky now. So this keyboard, yet yeah, again, another success and looking pretty good, even though it's like a cheapy, cheapy $15, $25 keyboard that I used to use at work. Um, I'm really happy to know that it still works and saved. Keyboard's been working great for some time now. Uh, actually, all of them are actually working really well. I will tell you, this method definitely is not for everybody. Um, there are definitely other ways to clean keyboards if, if uh, you know, damage is a concern, if when your warranty is a concern, um, maybe you might want to not do this. This is definitely something to do at your own risk. However, personally, I've washed dozens and dozens of keyboards and each keyboard probably a couple times too. And so far, none of them have actually gone bad. Uh, I could probably, I really wish I could do uh, more keyboards in this little washing keyboard montage, but uh, <laughs> that'll probably uh, be a pretty long video. So if you have any questions about this method, uh, by all means, go ahead and uh, shoot them over and I'll definitely answer anything I want. Um, I'll even tell you, if you want to know some more keyboards I've actually washed, you know, just uh, let me know, you know, Dell keyboards, Lenovo keyboards and a bunch of others, even some other wireless ones, a Microsoft keyboard that has uh, got a lot of crumbs underneath and I ended up washing it too. So, so you have the little LEDs lights here on. And I didn't fry anything out actually, so really happy about that. That's actually something always in my mind, washing these RGB LED backlit keyboards and whatnot. Well, we got, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, shoot a like as always. Um, you can also check out the other video I had as well for, you know, where I washed the keyboard. This actually, this keyboard is washed as well too. Subscribe, I'll be going ahead and um, posting some other, uh, damn, it's fingerprints already. <laughs> Go ahead and subscribe and uh, I'll definitely be shooting up some more videos. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Any uh, thoughts, comments, by all means, let me have it. Take care.